Let's get started with some driving. There are two key UltraShift components in the cab. A shifter to select different operating modes and the gear display, which will display the gear and operating mode you're in and the gear you're moving to. The gear display is also used to alert the driver when clutch abuse is being detected or when the transmission is in auto neutral mode or if there is a system fault. Eaton offers two shifters, a lever and a push button. Regardless of the configuration, the shifter has five modes, reverse, neutral, drive, manual, and low. There are also up and down buttons and a service light, which we'll cover later. Different OEMs may provide their own shifters and gear displays, but most of their functions are the same. If you're not using Eaton design components, just be sure to refer to your vehicle manual for instructions on the location and the use of your shift control. Now let's take Ultra Shift Plus out on the road. As with any vehicle, be sure to use proper safety procedures, buckle up, and be sure the parking or spring brake is set. You also want to be sure your shifter is in neutral. It is always a good practice to put your foot on the brake before starting the engine. Next, turn the key to the on position. At power up, Ultra Shift Plus will go through a self test. Now, you'll notice that the service light comes on and goes off, and the gear display shows a solid N, indicating that the Ultra Shift Plus has registered that you are in neutral. If the service light remains lit or the gear display shows a dash, Ultra Shift Plus has not confirmed neutral. Now, if Ultra Shift Plus has not confirmed neutral, the engine will not start. We'll go over what to do in that case a little later in the program. Assuming you've achieved normal power-up, a solid N will appear in the gear display. Just start the engine. The process of selecting a starting gear is the same whether you select reverse, drive, manual, or low mode. First, apply your service brakes. This is important because just like your own personal automobile, if Ultra Shift Plus doesn't register brake input, you won't be able to get into your initial starting gear. Now, place your foot on the brake, release the vehicle parking brakes, and then select a mode. The gear display will flash the gear you're going to. Once the gear is engaged, the display will become solid. To continue to launch, apply the throttle. Regardless of whether you're shutting down the vehicle or parked with the engine idling, be sure to select Neutral. Verify the display is Solid N, then set the parking brake and turn off the key. It is very important that you not power down in gear. This could torque lock your system. Auto Neutral should help prevent power down in gear if the parking brake is pulled. Refer to your driver's manual for more details. Refer to the Q&A section to understand what to do if you power down in gear. One note, after the key is turned off, you may hear the transmission making shifting noises for about 20 seconds. This is the normal calibration routine for Ultra Shift Plus. If you've selected Drive, Ultra Shift Plus will automatically upshift or downshift unless, conditions permitting, you decide to manually override the system and shift with the up and down arrows. During normal operation, the gear display will remain solid. During driver initiated shifts, the gear display will flash the gear you're going to. And when you're in gear, the display will become solid. The start gear selection may be changed due to load and grade. One note, in drive, Ultra Shift Plus will adapt to the changing conditions of the vehicle, but Right after power-up or after changing loads, Ultra Shift Plus needs to learn the new conditions. While learning, it may hold a gear instead of upshifting. Under normal operating conditions, simply push the up button to start the upshift. It could take up to 12 shifts for Ultra Shift Plus to learn the new conditions. After that, it will handle all the upshifts and downshifts automatically. If you selected manual, you'll be able to select different starting gears using the up and down buttons. 
depending on how your vehicle is programmed. It's important to choose a starting gear that's appropriate for the load and grade conditions. The transmission will override any inappropriate starting gear selections to avoid damaging the driveline. The transmission automatically selects the start gear. You'll also want to keep in mind that if you select a lower starting gear, UltraShift Plus will remember and continue to use that maximum starting gear in drive or manual until you choose another starting gear or until you shut down the unit. The start gear selection may be changed due to load and grade. Manual is a good choice for paving and spreading operations where you want to maintain a specific gear and speed. You may also want to use it during off-road driving when the vehicle is going to descend grades to prevent an upshift. Manual mode is also appropriate when operating in slippery, snowy, or icy conditions. Just like manual, low mode can be selected at any speed or at a stop. If you select a low gear at a stop, UltraShift Plus will engage and maintain the lowest gear possible. Low mode provides increased engine braking and helps reduce brake wear. Selecting low while moving when driving down long grades or when coming to a stop will optimize engine braking by initiating downshifts at higher RPMs. Low mode will prevent upshifts at all times, except when the engine is in an overspeed condition. Low is also the only means to enter or leave first gear on the VMS models. Let's move on to reverse mode. When using reverse, first, remember to select the proper reverse gear for your load and conditions. Some models have multiple reverse gears, so we suggest you refer to your driver's manual for information on the number of reverse gears available for your transmission model. You should also keep in mind that in order to engage a reverse gear or to shift between R2 to R3 with a vocational or performance model, you should be at a stop with your foot on the brake. The same rule applies while shifting between R1 and R2 on a line haul model. Reverse mode operates identically to manual mode, requiring driver initiated upshifts and downshifts. Just as with drive, manual, or low, the gear display will flash the gear you're going to. Once the gear is engaged, it'll become a solid display. Now, let's talk about a few of the display codes you may see on the gear display. If there is a traction control, stability control, or wheel slip event, the transmission will hold gear. Once the traction, stability, or slip event clears, the transmission will revert to normal shifting operations. For further details on your traction control and ABS systems, refer to your OEM driver's manual. That's it. That's all you need to know to drive the UltraShift Plus. If you still have questions, as we've said, there is a short troubleshooting segment at the end of this program. We strongly recommend you read your driver instruction manual before driving the UltraShift Plus transmissions. Not only will it give you useful tips, but it will walk you step by step through each of the procedures we've discussed here, as well as a number of others, including basic maintenance, troubleshooting, PTO operation, and diagnostics. As always, if you need more information, contact your Road Ranger Service Network at 1-800-826-4357. That's 1-800-826-HELP.